Spiritual Teaching 272 Love Each Other 1. I bless you Israel, and in you I bless present and future generations. You are my beloved disciples, those who have known of my revelations and my mandates at all times. I have sent you to earth in a new reincarnation, but before I have prepared and warned you, telling you how humanity of this time is, I have talked about its materialism and confusion, and you have asked yourselves, if you can fulfill your mission, and how can you penetrate my word that is subtle essence, that is tenderness and light, in those hearts hard as rock? The Master teaches you to fight. It turns you into peasants and gives you hearts as lands that you must prepare, cultivate, and make fruitful. 2. When you hear my word through man and call you Israel, your spirit is shaken. Your fragile matter was ignorant of these revelations, but the spirit knows and recognizes his mission. I tell you that you are designated to collaborate in my work and you must watch over your steps. Do not descend, do not materialize, be confused with the crowds, because you are superior to your brothers. Work in silence, that only love and charity distinguish you from your fellow men. 3. Your presence will dispel darkness, and if you close your lips because you do not find a propitious occasion to speak of my teaching, your spirit will speak and you will do light and justice among your brothers. 4. In this time of pain I have come to comfort you. All spirits know that the day of their liberation will come and they wait to see your salvation. They do not know in what form it will come, but they wait and question the arcanum. 5. You, people, have the confirmation of everything that had been prophesied and you must bring this light to humanity. Tell him that I love her and that in every moment of life that I give her, I manifest my charity and my power. Help her to perfect herself. Tell her that you seek me with purity, that you love me in spirit. 6. I will communicate with her when you, my peasants, have prepared her heart. I will scatter you and in you I will put my spirit to make my word reach men of all races and beliefs, because I lead humanity to a single end, to the only truth. 7. Men are stumbling on the obstacles of the road, mourning and suffering, and all this is due to restitution and to the justice that has come to transform them, according to my will. I want my children to love me as a father and spiritualize so that you may live in peace. 8. When a great trial reaches your heart, you ask me with disagreement. Is it written in my destiny that I have to rush this pain? Is it my refund? Is it your will, Father? And I tell you, nothing moves without my will. There are in your destiny many tests that you have to rush. Some will be the consequence of your faults to my law. Other they will go from my spirit to yours. However, they are all just even if you judge them unnecessary. If you watch and study, they will speak of my perfection and my love. Have hope and faith even in your older days that bitterness and trust, the next day will be better, that the sun of my love will illuminate your spirit and matter, and that your reason and intuition will be clear and you will be led to a good end. When you reach the end of your journey, there will be peace in you and joy in the Father. After each trial you will know your strength, and I will receive the fruit of it, according to the love you show me. 9. Humanity. Welcome the third age in which men will find spiritual wisdom. It is the age in which you will feel me through faith, intuition, and spirituality. Do not wait for my presence in human form, nor look for my wounds to sink your fingers into them to believe in me. 10. Everything will be spiritual at this time. 11. The time has come for you to conceive and feel me as spirit, leaving all your materialism behind. 12. Woe to the peoples who persist in their idolatry, in their fanaticism and in their routine. They will not be able to contemplate my light, nor will they feel the infinite joy of awakening the spirit. 13. Certainly my doctrine will move the world, but when the struggle has ceased, the true peace will be felt on earth, that which comes from my spirit. Only the foolish, the reluctant of understanding and hard of heart will continue to suffer. 14. An invisible world floats and vibrates over humanity. A world of beings of light, in front of which is Elijah, guiding and ordering everything. 15. 
Blessed are those who are sensitive to that heavenly influence. 16. In all the peoples of the earth there are men whose spirit was sent to help the spirit world in its work. What will become of them if they let their hearts turn into a rock insensitive to spiritual inspirations? Would have to drink a very bitter cup to return to the path from which they left. 17. For me the repentance of a being, his regeneration cannot be impossible nor their salvation. It would not be almighty and man would be stronger than me. Do you conceive my power inferior to the force that evil has in men? Do you consider human darkness superior to divine light? Never! Your heart tells me. 18. Think that my mission, after having given you life, is to bring you to perfection and to unite all of you in one single spiritual family. And do not forget that my will is fulfilled above all. 19. I, the Divine Sower, invisibly deposit my seed of love in each spirit. Only I know at what time this seed will germinate in all humanity, and only I know how to wait with infinite patience for the fruit of my works. 20. Take the essence of this teaching and begin by sowing unity within your families. Then seek the harmony between the congregations that make up your people and once united by spiritual ties, let your bosom radiate outward your peace and your well-being. 21. If you start to calculate the struggle that will be needed to convert all of humanity, and if you start to judge the magnitude of the sin that exists and the misery that is everywhere, you will have to feel overwhelmed by your thoughts. But who has told you that only you will have to save the world? Be satisfied with doing the part that to each one corresponds to you and let the others fulfill theirs and you will see how day by day and step by step, with the help of your Father, you will be witnesses of the fulfillment of my word. 22. It was your turn to inhabit the earth in these difficult moments for humanity. But do not complain about your destiny, because it would mean a reproach for me. Think that each one of you, I mean your spirit, has been several times on earth, and that in some of those existences you have tasted everything that the human heart desires. 23. Be certain that those who suffer the most at this time, it is because before they drank to the bottom in the glass of the pleasure, human satisfactions and the glory of the world, with which they turned from the spiritual path and were stained. 24. The time of restitution and purification had to come, even though centuries would have to pass over the world for this and your spirit had to wait for that hour. And that time has come, this is it, understand it, live it and take advantage of it. 25. Receive the light of the comforting spirit, the one who was to come according to my promise made to men. 26. Understand now why my presence in invisible form comes to fulfill that promise. I'm not now Christ incarnate, but Christ in spirit, shedding light, love, wisdom and comfort on those who suffer. 27. Love comes again to illuminate your life. Humanity, I come to teach you the spiritual path and to discover the truth that exists in you, so that you may know the divine light. Don't you realize that you are in error, believing yourself greater than you are? You believe in yourself according to the flesh, according to the human person. And do you know that this belief is false because the human is temporary? I have come to teach you to support your faith and advance in the values of your spirit because they are steadfast and eternal. 28. You have believed that you are only matter and that only this world exists and that is why you cry so much in life and your struggle is anguished and desperate. 29. Your materialism has converted the Eden that I entrusted to man into a hell. 30. False is the life that men lead, false their pleasures, their power and their wealth, false their wisdom and their science. 31. Rich and poor worry about money, whose possession is deceptive, worry about pain or disease, the idea of death shudders you. Some fear losing what they have and others yearn to have what they never have possessed. Some have plenty of everything while others lack everything, but all these struggles, passions, needs and ambitions, they only speak of material life, hunger of the body, low passions, human desires, as if they actually lack spirit. 32. The world and matter have temporarily defeated spirit, beginning by reducing it to slavery and they ended up nullifying their mission in human life. How are you going to realize for yourselves that this hunger, that misery, that pain and that anguish that depresses your life, 
are but the faithful reflection of the misery and the pain of your spirit. 33. It was essential that I come to discover the truth that exists in you and that you have not wanted to look at, but I have arrived. I am with you and I will teach you in principle to listen to the message of your conscience that you had long held back. 34. You will soon realize that life is not cruel to you men, but you who are cruel to yourselves. You suffer and you make suffer those around you for lack of understanding. You feel lonely. You see that nobody loves you and you become selfish and hard of heart. 35. It is when I come to make my voice heard that tells you to rise up, so that your feelings, that you do not see baseness and filth, but miseries and needs to forgive and alleviate. 36. Raise your mind and your gaze to the eternal so that you are filled with pure thoughts. 37. In infinity, which is the space of the spirit, vibrates light, high thoughts and true peace. Come up to there and strengthen yourselves in those regions. As long as you do not ascend, you will continue to get sick you will continue to fight without recognizing yourself as brothers. 38. This materialism has alienated men. The seed of division has multiplied in such a way that it is not peoples with peoples that are unknown, but even parents with children and brothers with brothers. 39. At least you, people who feed on my doctrine, get up from the mud, learn to love and forgive. Do not encrypt all your tranquility and happiness in the world of matter, Divide your cares and ideals between the spiritual, trying to give each part the right. 40. Stop believing that you are going to do everything for matter. Understand that to rise to God, you can only do it with the Spirit. 41. How can it be fair that you eternalize yourself in the belief that with material works you are going to work glory to your Spirit? Realize all your mistakes and errors. If, as you live materialized, you believe that is the end for which you were created, truly I tell you, that the awakening of your spirit to the truth will be very bitter. 42. God wants obedient children, not slaves, and you are only slaves of your passions and those of others. 43. You are like lost birds that, instead of chirping, groan in anguish. You no longer bless the day's benefits that I give you, you no longer bless my name every time my charity reaches you. 44. You feel faint because you have entrusted yourself to the forces of matter, but matter is weak. You will be strong when you can understand the great mistake of considering the world as the true kingdom of happiness. At the moment of enlightenment and understanding, the spirit will feel ashamed of smallness, because in the matter was dwarfed. He did not want to be the condor that conquers the heights, he preferred to imitate those birds that they need darkness to dwell in them because the light blinds them. 45. My doctrine must be well understood so that you understand that it does not come to teach you not to know human life, but to live the true one, but with your gaze, your mind and ideals in the eternal. 46. Today your spiritual ignorance is so great that when you remember those who have gone to the hereafter, you say, poor he died and had to leave everything and left forever. 47. If you knew with what compassion they see you from the spiritual world, those beings when they hear you speak so, pity is what they feel for you in the face of your ignorance, because if you could contemplate them, although if it were for a single instant, you would remain speechless and amazed at the truth. 48. You are going to cry before the inert remains that remained in the bowels of the earth, and while you fill flowers and water the slab that covers them with tears, those who freed themselves from these matters and inhabit the kingdom of freedom and light, they say, O oh, poor matter, how much I loved and defended you, how much I procured you in honors and transient joys, vanities and grandeurs, and now you are only a handful of ashes in a dark grave. 49. All of you meditate on my lesson and you will see in it explained with extreme simplicity the mysteries that you have not wanted, so far, to know. 50. In what better time than this, could I have come to comfort you? You can certainly also say that Christ in this time descended into hell, because what is more hell than your life of sins in which debate the world? I come to save you because you walk far from the true path, so far, that you have wanted to live without me when the truth is that your life and mine are one. 51. 
The existence of man, separated from the laws of God, is empty and false. Look why I have come to give you the light to save you with the same word that I brought you from long ago, because only one is truth and for the same reason a single doctrine. Your self-love raised up thrones of idolatry for you. But, convinced that the crown you thought you were wearing was false, your heart was disoriented. But within your being you can seek the presence of your God, the true King. When you find me there, I do not ask you to build a throne for me. I prefer an altar of love and humility where a lamp of faith shines. 52. Much is what your spirit needs. Analyze, how many times a day do you feed your body? Yes, one of those foods you end up lacking, you feel weakened. And your spirit, how many times a day do you feed it of my word? 53. Understand how great is the hunger and spiritual thirst of humanity in the midst of the aridity of your existence, and thus you will justify my presence in spirit, to explain my truth to you and console you in your great afflictions. 54. May my teaching and my coming serve at this time so that my new disciples, whom I want to be all you, become spirits of consolation like your master and rise up the paths of the earth doing my work, sowing my love, making light, bringing love and understanding to the hearts of children that fill the immense emptiness of your being, bringing the bomb to the sick overcome by the pain of the body, whose evils end little by little with his life, the consolation of the poor and the abandoned, who do not have a being on whom to rest your temple. 55. When you see the reality of those great sufferings, you will compare and bless your pain that you believed which was the greatest, and you will say, Lord, for all that I have I should be happy. 56. It will be necessary that you become intimate with the one who suffers so that your heart receives many lessons that sweeten it, soften it and separate it from false joys, to think a little about those who are hungry of affection, need for love and comfort. 57. Once you feel the pain of others as yours, I will have nothing to say to you. By yourselves you will rise in search of the needy, who lie in the pain beds of hospitals. Your hand without you feeling repulsion, it will rest lovingly on the leper, and it will know how to caress the child orphan of tenderness. Your lips in their word, they will bring light to the spirit, and you will know how to ignite a flame of faith in those who go through life aimlessly, without love and without God. 58. The spiritualist will not accumulate material goods in abundance but he will always try to be rich from treasures of the Spirit. He will always know what he has and what it is, suffer like all mortal, but never will he know despair or deny. 59. Keep my example in mind on all occasions, that life that I dedicated to love you, to comfort you and to teach you the path to eternal happiness. I spoke of that path through my doctrine and so that many would listen to me, I had no special place to make my word heard, both in the squares and in the porticos, in the streets or in the temples, on the roads or in the mountains, I made here the message that spoke of the kingdom of heaven. 60. Always be prepared with your saddlebag full of merits made in the fight, so that my call towards the other life, in no hour it surprises you. Always look within yourself and examine yourselves. Do not wait that hour to leave with your spirit empty of merits, because then you will want to do a lot of good on earth and it will be too late. Always be in communion with your consciousness, because you do not know when it is your departure. 61. Do not be dismayed, O spirits, for it is to whom I especially address my words. Persevere in me I walk and you will know peace. Truly I tell you, you are all destined to know happiness. I would cease to be your father if you had not been created to share the glory with me. But do not forget that for your enjoyment to be perfect, it is necessary that you carve out your merits step by step so that your spirit comes to feel worthy of that divine reward. See that I help you, that I accompany you throughout the path. Have full trust in me, knowing that my mission is linked to yours and my destiny to yours. 62. If you have not been able to rise to me, I have come to you, thereby giving you one more proof of my charity and an incentive for your faith. Just thinking about your fulfillment scares you, it is that you are strong for the struggles of the world, but weak for the mission of the Spirit. You tell me that you still have many defects to be able to consider you my disciples, but I tell you that each defect is like a stone and the whole of them is like a bundle. While you are walking under the weight of that burden, it is impossible for you to rise. But as you shed the heavy burden of your flaws away from you, 
you begin to feel that you can rise to the heights of the Spirit. 63. Let my word perfect you. I know that not all of you come with a heart prepared to hear me. There are those who laugh at this manifestation and those who doubt, as well as there are those who believe that even though the word is not of Christ, but of some other being. But I tell you that my thought comes in search of these minds to manifest in wisdom. 64. Who has the right to doubt my presence among men when I have given you proof of being subject to you for my love? Think of Jesus nailed to the tree and what does that cross represent? But to humanity in truth I tell you that I am still nailed in my cross of love, which is represented by my love towards my children. 65. You doubt, you judge, and you even mock, but I forgive and bless you, because you are sick with ignorance. I give you time for your reflection, because I know that tomorrow you will be one of the most fervent. Now you can't contemplate with all clarity the truth that I have come to manifest to you, because the flesh is stronger than the spirit, however, you will rise after the ideal of spirituality, and then you will become the strongest spirits of the world. 66. Fight the superfluous, fight the impure, Know that the vices of the world dull the senses of the spirit, preventing him from penetrating the lofty mansions. If you learn to live the true life, I tell you, that where you are and where you go with your presence will make everything a paradise of peace. My peace be with you.